I am standing at 104 North Main Street. For the past 121 years, this has been the home of the Fall River Public Library. My name is David Mello. For the past 30 years, I have been the supervisor of children's services here at the Fall River Public Library. And during that time, I've had the opportunity of taking many school groups and other public groups on tour of this magnificent building. And that is what I would like to do for you right now for the viewer at home. The library itself is of a late Italian Renaissance design treated in a simple manner. The exterior of the library is entirely constructed of Fall River granite. No wood enters the construction of the building save for the window and door frames. And the reason for this being, twice in the library's history, the library was completely destroyed by fire. Once in 1843 during the city's Great Fire, and again in 1886 when the library was housed in what was then the City Hall. It was decided in 1895 that a competition would be held for the design of the Fall River Public Library. Eighteen designs were submitted by firms throughout the country, with the winning design going to the Boston firm of Cram, Wentworth and Goodyear. The cost of the building, including the landscaping, the land itself, the curbing, the furnishings, was a total of $252,000. The main entrance on North Main Street opens into a lofty vestibule, which is furnished entirely in a white Vermont marble with pale green veins. This vestibule, lighted by a central skylight, is covered by a dome which rests on ten marble columns rising from a stalabite of pink Tennessee marble. The floor is covered with elaborate mosaic of colored marble. From this vestibule, steps rise on one side to the trustee's room on the other side to the librarian's room, while in front they lead directly to the delivery hall. When one looks up into the dome, we are greeted by a four-paneled mural designed and painted by the Italian artist Ludovico Cremonini. The painting is called The Genius of the Nation and was painted in 1907. Cremonini emigrated to the United States in 1901, where he remained here in Fall River until 1910. While here, he painted besides these murals, a series of 24 large murals for the Notre Dame de Lourdes Church. The murals were lost in 1992, when the church was totally destroyed by fire. When first entering the vestibule, the first panel you are greeted by represents the United States in the form of a woman warrior protecting a child holding a book. On each side are figures leaning over cornucopias. It signifies the prosperity of the nation. To your left, over the door to the main office, is a panel representing Massachusetts, symbolized by a Puritan seated on a stone chair and presiding over the education of his children. Some say that this figure represents Benjamin Franklin, on the right side is a male figure wearing a cap, traditionally associated with printers and resting one arm on a printing press. Another female on the right side is holding an easel and paintbrush. The mural to your right as you head into the library over the administrator's office depicts the genius of Washington. Like the central figure in the Massachusetts mural, George Washington is shown reading while to his right and left are scenes of war and agriculture. As you depart the library, you see the fourth of the Cremonini murals on your way out. It represents Fall River. A maternal female figure presides over the production of cotton textile goods. To the left and to the right, a boat, emblematic of the traditional ways in which trade and commerce were carried on. Cremonini shows the textile goods as being manufactured by both a man and a woman, which is historically accurate. Throughout the period in which Fall River was a leading textile center, more than half the workers were women. When leaving the vestibule, we go directly into the delivery room, the central feature of the building. The delivery hall is two stories high and is lighted by a large skylight of rippled silver glass set in gilded bronze. The finish of the first story of this delivery hall is of pink marble. Located around the four monumental doorways 
are of purple Levanto marble. When one looks to the floor, we see this marvelously intricate mosaic, all placed in by hand, all of these tiny marble tiles, all intricately placed in a rather elaborate design. When one goes up above and looks from the, down from the colonnade, we are uh, delighted to see this beautiful, beautiful pattern. In the center of the delivery hall, we see this marvelous design. Now, this was originally a metal grating. Now it's filled in with a type of resin, but before it was an open grating that led down to the furnace. And back in the day, the library was heated down below by the furnace, and the air, the hot air, was distributed throughout the building by this gigantic, approximately 10 foot in diameter wooden wheel. It would spin around and just blow the heat up through the various vents located throughout the building, this being one of them. The room that we're in right now is the library's AV room, and it houses all our DVDs and our talking book collection and all our CDs as well. Originally, this served as the library's original reference room. And when one looks up at the ceiling, we really get an appreciation for the uh, Italian Renaissance uh, feel of the building with the rich plaster work and the ornate design. And in some instances, you get these wonderful large plaster flowers that just seem to burst from the ceiling. It gives you the sense that you're in a very special place. Here I'm standing by one of the four yellow Verona marble columns that support the ceiling of the reference room. The fireplace as well is made out of the same type of marble. One of the interesting things about the library is as you tour the building, you'll find a rich abundance of all different types of marble from all over the world, from Tennessee, from Maine and New Hampshire, as well as Italy. Interesting fact about the libraries. At one, at one time, there were fireplaces located throughout the building. And nearly every single room in the library has it, including the original restrooms had fireplaces, but to our knowledge, none of the fireplaces, even though they're functional, were they ever really used. You can tell by the fact that they're so clean, there's no soot. Though not original to the library, the library now boasts its own YA room. It's a welcoming center for uh, young adults filled with all the types of material that uh, they enjoy reading. It's uh, brightly decorated with posters and with murals. Originally, it was the library's technical services department. Every library book that came through the building came through this department to receive covers, uh, library spine labels, and were uh, entered into the library's catalog. We are now in the Fell Room, which houses the main bulk of the library's fiction collection. Originally, the height of this room went the full two stories of the library, but at some later date, a ceiling was added on, and above us now is an additional part of the library's reference room. In 1991, the library underwent a rather dramatic restoration, and no more was it more dramatic than right here where I'm standing in the stacks. Originally, this area was one gigantic open area, and within it, there stood a separate structure entirely made of metal. It was a superstructure located within the library and attached to the, uh, the inner walls of the library itself, but it was a freestanding structure with glass floors that people were able to walk around and uh, maneuver throughout the stacks. People who toured the library at this time have fond memories of those glass floors and seeing the, the feet of the people uh, above them as they walked overhead. Unfortunately, the, store, uh, the uh, floors no longer exist, but uh, we have uh, fond memories of uh, the days when we do ha did have them. Now, all that is left of these glass floors are the remaining panels that are located in the entrances to each of the stack levels. Unfortunately, the original luster of the glass does not show through because they were just set into the concrete floor. As one navigates the library from floor to floor, we find ourselves walking on stairs of pink marble from Tennessee. One reaches the second floor of the library, 
we see the library's magnificent colonnade, comprised of 16 columns of green marble capped by pink Knoxville marble. Each marble column bears an ionic style cap carved of pink Knoxville marble. Surrounding the colonnade is a fine example of artwork created by the Fall River School of Painters, which flourished in Fall River in the 1800s. One of the leading proponents of this group was Robert Spear Dunning. Here we see one of his samples, Still Life with Roses. And in it, it is a wonderful example of the painter at his height. We see a still life of peaches and pears and grapes with a vase displaying roses in bloom. The painting above me is called Marconi. It is painted by Mary Elizabeth McCumber. She was also a member of the Fall River School of Painters at a time when women painters were not necessarily supported as much men, as men and were kind of frowned upon. It was kind of looked on as being a, a, a men's uh, profession to be a professional painter. But she went on to have an extremely successful career and later had a studio located in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, several of her, of her examples were shown at World's Fairs and uh, unfortunately she died um, a very young death. Another fine example of the artist's work is this particular piece, Memory Comforting Sorrow, done in the style of the Pre-Raphaelite painters. It happens to be one of my favorite paintings in the entire collection. The library has many fine collections that it exhibits from time to time, but one of its uh, more permanent collections is the Mineral Collection, donated in 1920 by James Manchester in memory of his wife, Florence Pilkington Manchester. At the time of its donation, it was looked upon as being one of the finest collections in the world. Here we are in the Davis's reference room. Originally, the reference room was located on the first floor, but at one point, it was later moved up here to the second floor of the library. Off the Davis's reference room, we find the Ryan reference room, which houses additional materials, as well as microfilm readers, where one can view copies of the Fall River Herald News on microfilm dating back to 1826. It was the original intent of the library that the second floor would always house a collection of artwork, mostly represented by the Fall River School of Painters, and that the first floor would be the library itself. With the renovation in 1991 came the addition of the Fall River Room, which houses a collection of rare books on the history of Fall River and other subjects of which there are few or even just one volume in existence. Old maps showing the city in its infancy can also be found here. When one visits the second floor colonnade, one should always check out the special exhibit of antiques from the Fall River Public Library, showing wooden telephones, wooden typewriters, and simple sign-making machines that were used in the library during its day. Now here's a view you won't get to see if you visit the Fall River Public Library on your own. Here we are in the attic of the library looking down through the skylight. And here we get a view of the Browns frame and the skylight itself uh, with all the multitudes of pieces of silver stippled glass. At the time of the renovation in 1991, each of these panes were taken down and thoroughly cleaned and then reinstalled. And it was at that time um, the people who were doing the restoration work estimated the cost of each single pane being between $75 and $125. We're now inside the children's room. When the library first opened up in 1899, there was no children's room. It opened up a year later and served also as an adult periodical and newspaper reading room. Today it is a very active department with reading programs, contests, and an annual summer reading program that, that's enjoyed by children throughout the city. I hope you've enjoyed your tour of the Fall River Public Library, and I hope that someday you'll be here to visit the library yourself.